Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Car, and we've already taken the Nissan Xterra off-road, but coming up next, we're gonna have a proper, regular review and see what it's like to live with this vehicle. We're gonna leave something up to your imagination, and that's the zero to 60 time of the Nissan Xterra at nearly 6,000 feet above sea level. The reason why is because the solo DL does not work today because I forgot to charge it. We've already shown you this engine, which is 261 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque, which is perfect. Very, very good off-road. And even up here, well above a mile above sea level, excellent, excellent engine, good power. But there is a drawback, and that is combined gas mileage is rated at 17 miles per gallon. For me, it's been closer to 15 or 14 miles per gallon. The problem is this is a heavy vehicle, and as such, no matter what, you're going to lose the potential for good mileage. It's healthy. I mean, 281 pound-feet of torque. That's good. The sound, it kind of sounds like a blender. It just doesn't sound great. A lot of you have written in talking about the competition, that being the Toyota FJ and the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. And they are neck and neck in terms of the people they appeal to and in terms of ability. But the Nissan Xterra beats them both in one major area, and that's overall utility. La la, lots of space, hard plastics, easy enough to put a bike or something dirty in here, and a nice little storage pit under here, which is big enough for, well, a box of tins, you know, cookies, popcorn, little things like that. Not a lot, actually. They also have these runners on the side. You can put cleats in them and hold things down. But there is a negative, and I'm about to show you what it is. Now, if my little guy had long arms like mine, he could reach up here and open the door. But his arms are way, way down here, and he's four years old. So if you have kids and you want them to scramble in here, make sure they're five or six years old, or else they're not gonna be able to reach this from the ground. Another issue is, frankly, it's kind of hard and narrow to get in here. Believe it or not, this has about the same amount of rear legroom, at least in terms of usability, as the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, and a little bit more than the Toyota FJ. And also, it's a little easier to enter than the FJ. I personally think that there's just enough room for me to be comfortable for about an hour's worth of driving, and I am sitting behind myself. I think it's fine for kids, but I certainly don't recommend it for anybody who plays professional basketball. Now, if you want to quickly fold down the rear seats here, and da-da, not much, but fortunately, you can lift up this section here, and it will fold flat. I'm actually a fan of the first and somewhat second generation of the Nissan Xterra before they went to this body style. It's not bad looking, I just like the round headlights on the supercharged version, it's a long story. This one is fine to look at, but once you realize how cheap some of the materials are and the fact that this whole area here that's supposed to be metal is actually plastic, it takes away from it. Strong hood, strong body type, love these lights, wish they worked better, or at least you would able, you know, maybe pop them off and actually use them, as opposed to swinging a dead cat over your head and praying and doing all that other stuff. You have to hit a whole bunch of things to make those work. A long time ago, I went to Moab, Utah, and I took one of these Xterras with me, and it was an awesome trip, and I had a great time, and the vehicle did really, really well. But I had an issue. I played poker with a bunch of buddies in Moab the night before we smoked cigars, and spilt beer all over ourselves. It was really horrible. So I took that shirt and I <laughs> threw it in here. This is really made for like if you have a wetsuit and you want to throw it in there or really nasty things and you throw them in there. I threw in my nasty shirt and by the time I drove 500 miles back to Denver, everything was fine. I 
absolutely love driving through Red Rocks, Colorado. It's just gorgeous. It's windy and picturesque, and it's right next to a major highway. So I'm able to get a lot of impressions in a very short amount of time in terms of a vehicle's ability with regular driving. And that is exactly what I have done with the Nissan Xterra. The ride is soft. My kids, they sit in the back of this thing, three seconds later. No, it's not quite like that, but it's almost like that. Regular curvy roads, no problem. Highway driving, piece of cake. Traffic, not too bad because the windows in this vehicle are actually really big and if you compare it to the Toyota FJ or the Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, it's easier to see out of this one. I'll tell you the one thing I'm not thrilled about, and it's not a bad thing, but it's just something I'm not thrilled about, and that's the five-speed automatic transmission. It is by far not enough. <laughs> Six-speed automatic, please. Now, you can get a six-speed manual transmission, which is fantastic. I highly recommend it, because only real men like to stir their own coffee. You know what I'm saying? One thing that I have to say about the Nissan Xterra that's always endeared it to my heart, more so than a lot of the competitors, and that's its price. You get a lot of truck for very little money. This vehicle, as equipped, runs about $32,000. Um... Think about that. Think about what you can get from Jeep, what you can get from Toyota for that amount of money. Now, you can get a Jeep, you can get a Toyota FJ, but in terms of having the type of equipment that this vehicle has, no, you can't really do that. We're gonna leave something up to your imagination, and that's the zero to 60 time of the Nissan Xterra at nearly 6,000 feet above sea level. The reason why is because the Solo DL does not work today because I forgot to charge it. So, try to figure out what the speed is. the Nissan Xterra and I would buy it if it were a manual but the tester is an automatic so as I've said before buy it lease it rent it or forget it I would lease it I really wish there were more vehicles like this available in the United States and they're just shrinking away they're like dinosaurs they're dying off such a pity well fortunately we still have the Xterra and a few others out there that we can have fun with and man you really should get out there and do some off-roading Oh, by the way, don't worry about me being up here on this. This is meant for fat people, old ladies, interns, things like that. Mm. For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan Adlin. See you next time.